Our series Border Battle continues today with a story about alleged torture. Three dozen Tijuana police officers accuse the city's police chief and soldiers in the Mexican army of using torture to try to force them to confess their ties to organized crime. KPBS border reporter Amy Isaacson and Vicente Calderon, editor for TijuanaPress.com, our partner in this series, bring us this report. Tijuana's police chief, Julian Lezaola, is on a crusade to rid his force of corruption. When he inherited the department two years ago, he says the drug cartels paid many officers so well to be their eyes and ears that police salaries were more like tips. Hay policías que se han, eh, consignado. We've arraigned about 140 or 150 police for their criminal activity. Lezaola's principal ally in the fight is the Mexican army. They're going after the corrupt cops and also organized crime. The police chief's work has earned him high praise. Roberto Quijano leads one of the most important business groups in Tijuana. He has done for our community what the, uh, many police officers hadn't done in many, many years. I think he has the, uh, the integrity, he has the preparation, and he has the guts to go ahead and fight for our community. Well, for some, Lisa Ola is a hero. For others, he's a despot. He's inventing criminals. He grabs whoever and says he belongs to a cartel to make people think he's cleaning up the streets. Blanca Messina's father has been a Tijuana policeman for 22 years. Here, Tijuana's Mayor Jorge Ramos congratulates him for his service to the city. Two months later, Blanca says her father was arrested for allegedly working for a drug cartel. They used plastic bags so they'd incriminate themselves and their colleagues. They asphyxiated them multiple times. Some lost consciousness, and my dad had a heart attack. She and the relatives of three dozen officers have joined forces to denounce this alleged abuse. Blanca says it all began one afternoon last March. Lisa Ola and his second in command told her father and three other officers they were being taken to the military base for questioning. Blanca says her father and the other police asked to see a warrant. There was no warrant, but they were taken anyway. They blindfolded them. They took them to a room. In that room, there was a federal prosecutor who asked questions. Also in that room, according to Blanca, were other officers who'd been arrested. KPBS and TijuanaPress.com obtained legal depositions of the 25 officers that were detained that week. One after the other claims they were beaten or had electric shocks applied to their genitals, among other punishment. A military doctor revived them when they passed out. Soldiers told them if they died, their bodies would be dumped on the highway. Their deaths would be made to look like cartel hits. The officers were forced to sign statements they weren't allowed to read. After 40 days, authorities took them from the military base to the airport. Miguel Messina, Blanca's father, and the rest of the group were flown to a prison in central Mexico. And that's where they remain. On November 5th, the Inter-American Human Rights Commission heard the case of Miguel, 35 other police, and four civilians. The Mexican army faces more and more human rights complaints. They come as President Felipe Calderon has deployed tens of thousands of troops to crack down on drug cartels. Baja California's former human rights prosecutor, Francisco Sanchez Corona, spoke at the commission. He says the Mexican government has the responsibility to fight corruption, but cannot use torture to do so. There's a pattern of impunity in the face of this torture. Government officials discourage people from filing and pursuing complaints. Leisa Ola, who officers claim was present during the torture, says the claims are bogus. No solo se corrompe por dinero, no. One has to understand, criminal organizations, economic power and threats can corrupt any institution. So maybe the criminal groups are using human rights organizations for their own benefit. The army commander in charge of Tijuana, Alfonso Duarte, 
also rejects the accusations. No han sido ellos sujetos a alguna tortura. Since the hearing, some of the imprisoned officers' families say they've been pressured to shut up. Blanca says one night, two cars followed the wife of an officer and forced her to stop. A, una de, de los familiares. A man got out and told the woman we should back off, and they told her to tell me to just leave things be. But Blanca says she won't shut up until she's cleared her father's name, no matter what threat she faces. Amy Isaacson, KPBS News. Vicente Calderón, TijuanaPress.com. And joining me now to discuss the latest news on the war on drugs south of the border are Amy Isaacson and Vicente Calderón. Welcome to you both. What fine work you do. Vicente, you. let's start with uh, Julian Leciola, the, uh, the police chief. How many police officers did he remove from the force over suspicion of corruption with drug cartels? Between 140 and 150. There may be other officers who left on their own well because they thought they were investigated. The number that they get rid of in general is over 400, but about what, between 140 and 150 are in jail under investigation. Out of how large a police About 2,300 or 2,200. Okay, well, I won't do the math, but that's a substantial amount. It's so very important if you take into consideration the, the hierarchy or the positions they were, some of those. We're talking about the second in command is among the group that, that is on jail because it's suspicious ties to, to organized crime. All right, we'll talk about that. Those allegations of torture um, are being taken by several human rights organizations. Amy, tell us about some of the organizations. What are they doing? How did the allegations get to them in the first place? Two Baja California, Baja California human rights organizations have taken up the, the cases by these three dozen officers and four civilians as well, as well as a group in Mexico City. And the claims came to them because Blanca Messina, who we saw in the piece, says that she tried to go to local authorities, but her claims either fell on deaf ears or she was encouraged not to pursue them. So she went to these non-governmental organizations and they've taken up the cases. They filed a petition with the Inter-American Commission on Human Rights, which is one of the highest human rights courts in this Western Hemisphere. And the commission held a hearing about public safety and human rights in the drug war in Tijuana. They're investigating. They're con particularly concerned about a practice called arraigo in Mexico, which is a new, relatively new law that allows authorities to hold someone for 40 days, detain them while they investigate to try and get evidence against the person. They're concerned about the conditions that these people are being held in as well. And Amnesty International also released a recent report criticizing Mexican government and civilian authorities for not investigating these human rights cases and saying that the Mexican military has a lack of transparency in their judicial system and doesn't have a willingness to have people investigated. Okay, but, but police corruption has been a serious problem in Tijuana. And considering that, how, how difficult is it for the families of these officers that have been detained or theoretically tortured uh, to get the attention of the public about these cases. It's very difficult because people assume immediately if it's a cop it must be guilty from the start. So that's a big problem that we are seeing with these cases. And by now, if we are, since we are bringing voice, giving the voice to the people who is complaining, I compare this with the Patriot Act. Do you remember when the beginning of the war in Iraq, sure. everybody was afraid that be singled out as a non-patriot because they were talking about against the, the war. Well, this is what happened. If you criticize the strategy of President Calderon using the military or the way Le Saola is doing things, you almost look like you are in favor of the drug traffickers. And this is very, it's a, it has been problematic also for the families. That, that's why they ended up on Washington. But what about the judicial system? How has that responded to allegations of human rights abuses? Not really. Even the Mexican president, Calderon, is basically ignoring these claims. And he's, he's basing his strategy, strategy against drug traffickers and the participation of the army helping them. And I, let me, I need to be very clear here. We believe, or I believe, that the Mexican military has been fundamental in the progress, arguable, arguable or not, but in the progress that they are doing against drug trafficking. And that Chief Leisaola is doing things, as we saw, that many people think it's, are, have, are unprecedented. But the way they are doing, I think, need to be looked at. Okay, well, I thank you very much. Vicente Calderon, Amy Isaacson.